we're good to go. All right, uh, we're back with our second game of the evening, which uh, I have entitled The Welcomes Taker. Uh, and uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Uh, and before we get into it, as always, I want to take a brief moment and introduce our wonderful players. We have a storied tiered game here first, so without further ado, uh, it has been perhaps some time since we've seen this particular adventure, uh, but I am very happy to have back with us once more, Octa Fireblood. Hello, Octa. How? Oh. Hello. I'm sorry, I thought you said how, and then I realized it was hello. I thought you were about to ask a <laughs> question. Um, so, Octa, um, welcome back. Uh, what? Tell me, where have you uh, Where have you been? What have you been up to? It's been such a long time since we've seen you uh, adventuring. Uh, I've just been... Um... Wandering about some of the higher planes, um, spending some time with my uh, with my patron, really. Mm -hmm. uh, have you uh, in in this time? Um, well, I guess part of my question is, have you gained any kind of revelation from your patron, or about their um, well, their desires for you here upon this mortal plane, as you're kind of you know now rejoining the uh, the lands in some sense? Uh, I have not, no. Uh... Uh, who is it's your patron, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, sorry? I said, uh, who is your patron, if you don't mind me asking? I know some warlocks can be a little private about their patrons, so I won't press if you don't... Uh... Um, I, I don't know much about him, but his name is Ardok. Um, hmm. Ardok. I'm, I'm not too familiar with anything about him, though. Hmm. Uh... He won't tell me much. Well, I, uh, I hope everything's on the up and up, um, but I suppose as long as uh, this individual's given you as much strength as they obviously have, um, well, I guess it's worth it. Well, you, you come back on an auspicious time. It is welcomes taking here in the land of D&D &D time. Uh, does Octo celebrate welcomes taking normally? It sounds like uh, perhaps not. Uh, no, no um, I do not celebrate it mm. so much. Uh, well, I hope you... Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy this opportunity to uh, see one of these uh, these cultures here in the land of D&D &D time. Uh, welcome back uh, to you, Octa. Uh, next up, we have joining us uh, with us tonight is Bog Braz. Uh, Bog, hello again. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. It's nice to see you, too. What's good? Um, I mean, a lot of things good. It's, it's the holidays. Uh, I'm in a, a wonderful mood for that. Uh, Bog, would you like to tell us... Uh, well, do you particularly celebrate welcomes taking? Is this an important holiday for you? Uh, in Malay culture, it's mostly just uh, painting and uh, just hanging out. It's, mm. it's kind of the vibe. Do you ever uh, do your paintings? Because, of course, all throughout the land of D&D &D time, the credo is that you're welcome to take anything from your tables. Do you set up tables with some of your you know, finer paintings? Oh, yeah, definitely. They're free to take. People can just put them in their homes, sell them. I don't really care. Oh, that's so. Uh, that's very generous of you, Bog. And of course, this is a time for generosity. Um, Bog, what particular? Uh, do you have anything? Have you, have you painted anything for today? Or are you hoping to do some painting while you're out, kind of you know, exploring the town of Sweetaville where you're headed? Uh, I've, I've been mostly po uh, like. Uh, I'm not sure actually. Uh, I haven't really done much in a while. I'm just kind of lazy lately. Eh, fair enough. Everyone has. Uh, Everyone has periods of hard work and then lulls. Uh, I can I can certainly relate. Uh, Bog, welcome back. I wish you all of the uh, success in the world and your endeavors today. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, next up, we have joining us once more. Uh, we have uh, Minoru is back with us again. Uh, good evening, Minoru. Uh, hello. Um, and. Uh, I'm sorry, you do go by Minoru, correctly? Not your uh, your surname, uh, Tarao? Yes, I do, actually. Oh, I've okay. gotten somewhat used to uh, people not quite understanding the convention, so I just started answering to Tarao. Okay, but you would prefer Minoru, or should should Tarao just become the, the norm? I do prefer Minoru, yes. Then I will call you as such, uh... Welcome back, Minoru. It's good to see you again. Um, tell me, do you celebrate welcomes taking? I do, actually. Hmm, uh, well, do you have any particular welcomes taking traditions? What do you like to leave on your uh, table at welcomes taking? Or do you uh, have in your kind of region of the world where you live? We used... To... I... 
back whenever my clan was still together and we were all, uh, you know, the good old days. Mm -hmm. We had this traditional table that we'd set up just for this occasion, and it's a table that's kind of uh, pressed in the middle, and we would just fill it full of rice. Fill it full of rice? That's, uh, that's very yes. interesting. Uh, we have this giant serving of rice that might sound a little cliche, but we actually lived near a farm, so we have fairly easy access to it. And, and Nothing well, cliche about it. It's Tradition is an important part of welcome staking, and if you were, uh, well, if that's what made you feel close to home and close to the people around you, I suppose that's what counts. It was uh, it was nice. We uh, what we'd actually do is we, it wouldn't be for us. We would just bring people in so the the homeless or the the poor could eat. That's one of the uh, the lovely things about the day uh, is just equal opportunity, generosity to all. Just you're welcome to take anything from the table. Um, I'm uh, well. It's interesting to hear about what welcomes taking is like in, in your particular uh, in in your particular culture. Uh, but um, as well, it's also just good to have you back, uh, Minoru. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, and, of course, last but not least, we have rejoining us once more, uh, Azilas, or Az, as I believe you prefer to be called. Um, good evening, Az. Oh. Um, so tell me, Az, uh, how are you? Uh, this is your, uh, is this your first welcomes taking here in the lands of D&D &D time? It is, and I don't know what to expect, but so far from what I've seen of the lands of D&D &D time, I think it's going to be a, a wonderful occasion. Uh, well, uh, I hope that it meets your expectations in that regard. Um, as Liz, uh, are, are there any particular holidays that you are a, a big fan of? Is, th is there anything that uh, as Liz likes to celebrate? Because um, I know you're, you know, more of a uh, a new arrival here in the lens. Uh, well, I do like s celebrating spring, but aside from that, I haven't really seen a whole lot of uh, mm. what are these called festivities around. Yes, um, I guess you're uh, m more attuned to the the natural changes in the uh, the environment, the solstices and the um, the equinoxes, things like that. The changing of the times. Uh, yes, well, that's a uh, that's a very pleasant way. I know a lot of people around the D and D time mark their calendars in those ways too. Also celebrating some of these more traditional kind of folk uh, folk holidays uh, that are built up around the season. So you'll be in good company as you move forward. Um, but just, I guess also, as Liz, how are you? Um, how have your journeys about the land been? Uh, have you been kind of like meeting anyone new or just, you know, have your adventures been pleasant? Yeah, it has. I, and I spent a little bit of time in Central City getting to know the place. And, uh, you know, I quite like it here. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming, all the sights and sounds, especially of Central City. Uh, but it seems like you're fitting in very well. It's good to have you back, As. Thank you. Uh, and with that, um, let us hop into our adventure tonight. Um, you find yourself headed to one of the uh, far northern areas of the land of D&D time. It is a, um, well, the frigid cold of the Big Rock Candy Mountains. However, you're not going into the deep, deep portions of the mountain range, up where kind of tribes of lizard folk reign and a lot of people worship the cloud up there. Um, you're right on the outskirts of the region and there's kind of a pleasant tourist uh, village by the name of Sweetaville uh, that is set up around here. Uh, and every year on Welcome's Taking it has a pretty sizable festival uh, and kind of just a, a very grand celebration of the day with a cooking competition, uh, as well as throughout the town, various merchants and homes and families all have their own tables, kind of, uh, for the most part, the tables are set up on the street outside of people's houses, so people that are walking by, you don't have to come into people's homes, you can just uh, take whatever it is that you want as you're walking past on the street, uh, but there is an incredible array uh, and spread of food and drink and crafts. Um, and various items of that nature as you walk about the town. Um, you were specifically sent here um, by Bartholomew because he wanted you to meet up with the town mayor of Sweetaville. Uh, and 
apparently they're having some type of problem here uh, amongst the festivities, which is always kind of sad to hear on uh, such a, a bright holiday. But um, Bartholomew has instructed all of you to locate the mayor, and you're able to find them with relative ease. Uh, you can see they're human. They're wearing an incredibly tall and kind of narrow top hat. Uh, you can see they have a, um, a big tie that's on them, and they're shoulders um, where there would normally kind of be like shoulder pads there's a couple of like gum drops on either side and you're noticing a lot of their clothing is kind of interspersed with candy in various places as you wander to the uh, center of town they're wearing a, also a big sash kind of the main giveaway is they're wearing a sash that says mayor on it uh, and as you get closer to the um, the mayor of Sweetaville here uh, they kind of turn around and look towards you and just oh hello there you must be the adventurers from Bartholomew's employ. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you, too. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I am Mayor Gumdrops here of Swedeville, and, well, we have a little bit of a troubling time here in town today. What's, uh, what's the issue? I um, mean, well, that's a... Well, that's just the thing of it. As you've seen, uh, I hope you've all been enjoying the festivities, by the way. We work very hard to make sure this town's, uh, well, this town's reputation and its welcomes-taking festivities are second to none. Uh, so I hope that has been pleasant for you, but um, unfortunately we've encountered a couple of individuals that haven't been as, uh, well, kind about the holiday as it's expected. Um... Now, uh, all of you, I imagine, already know that the uh, welcomes taking season, it has certain codes of honor. We keep out everything on our tables and tell people to take everything, and, well, by those rules, people can take everything if they so desire. Uh, and that is the case. Uh, someone's going around and just taking the whole spreads off of tables. Well, it's, it's uh, not against the rules of the day, it's certainly against the spirit. So I would like you to track this individual down and, well, bring them to me. People have been complaining quite a bit. They're calling them the welcomes taker. Uh, that's no fun if, if he's taking everything and not leaving anything for the others. That's what I think, and I think that's what most think. Yeah, uh, would you happen to know anything about this this person who's been taking everything. I've been hearing complaints from a number of the individuals around here. Um, you might want to ask some of the merchants that had their uh, tables swiped. Uh, and he kind of points down the way and you can see here and there in different places. Some of the tables that are a little bit more isolated here are just completely stripped bare. Um, you can see one um, in front of it it looks like it might have been uh, a smith's table. Uh, and there's the person is just kind of sitting there in their smith's apron, uh, head kind of tucked downwards, looking a little bit sad. Uh, and there are a number of tables that are throughout the space that seem to be in a similar state of just empty, and whoever owned them uh, kind of bummed out that their table's just been wiped clean. Um, well, you know, I don't think that's very friendly. I say we should uh, go catch this guy and give him a good uh, roughing up. Um, well, don't... They aren't breaking the law, and... Hurting them doesn't seem like the way to solve things. Why don't you just bring them back to me? We we will try and convince him to come back. All right. Well, do your best. Uh, and of course, if you do need to use force, and he kind of winks a little bit. Well, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh. <laughs> And he goes, well, okay. I have to see to the cook-off, so I'm going to get back to work. But let me know when you find anything out or if you need any help. Sure. Uh, we'll definitely let you know, Mary Gumdrop. Bye-bye! Um, oh, he turns around. Um, oh, uh, do you guys want to go talk to some of the merchants then? Sure. Well, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um... All right, uh, so you guys go around and, and, and you begin to work your way around and start to interact with some of the merchants around here. Uh, I have a question. Are you guys also, like, you're here and you, you got kind of plenty of time. Are you also, like, participating in the festival? Have you been taking stuff and, and seeing what's just kind of around to grab while you're you're looking around? Or are you guys I right now just beelining right over to always the Always looking for new loot. 
Uh, uh, you know, I don't see a problem if we're just browsing, you know, take yeah. what we need. Um, okay, uh, so in that case, uh, as you're looking around um, and kind of working your way over, I'd like all of you to make me perception checks, to just kind of, like, take in the space a little bit. Um... All right. Um, so you're um, you're all kind of moving along, and, and you see, you know, the various stands that are set up. Uh, for one thing, there is in, in basically an endless uh, an endless supply of food. Uh, most of the food here, it's, it seems to be that the people here really have a strong preference for sweets and candies and things like that. Especially because of like the natural landscape around here has so much candy just kind of growing out of it in the Big Rock Candy Mountains. Um, so most of the things that are on tables are pretty sugary, but there's, like I said, a near endless supply of food and snacks, if any of you are so inclined. Uh, additionally, as, as you're looking around as, um, I mean, all of you see the occasional merchant table, uh, a lot of people are doing crafts, you guys notice. Um, someone who looks like they have, like, a bunch of, like, jewelry that's set up, some of them made from, like, different pieces of candy and candy canes, uh, and, and various, like, necklaces. Uh, Bog, you catch another artist that has their paintings that are up on their table, uh, currently just for the taking, if you wish. Uh, it seems to be a lot of, um, uh, it, it seems to be a lot of landscapes here in the Big Rock Candy Mountain, but they're all pretty stylized, if that's something that interests you at all. Um, and as, you noticed one kind of stand that's, it's a little bit off the, uh, it, it's a little bit off the kind of way, you, you can see that, like, some of the empty ones closer, but even a little bit further beyond that, you can see in a corner um, what looks like just this like hunched up, um, for lack of a better term, I mean, there's just something wizardly about them. They got the robes, they got the pointy hat, uh, and they're there like carving ice sculptures, and that looks pretty interesting too, uh, if you're uh, wanting to check that out at all. Um, but that's kind of the scene that you guys are seeing, so uh, what would you all like to do? Uh, I'll point everybody else towards the the wizard-looking man with the ice sculptures, hmm. and say, uh, "That that he he looks like he might know about something. Do you think we should go talk to him?" I I will come over, but keep the ice away from me. Ed. Me and ice don't really mix too well. Very well. Um, in that case, you begin kind of wandering your way over, uh, and it is decidedly, Okta, perhaps for you who's who's used to uh, warmer temperatures, a, li a little overly chilly here, and you can see, like, frost that seems to be coming around the ground that's just kind of pooling up into the air around this individual, uh, and uh, they're kind of, like, leaning over, currently carving very carefully uh, what appears to be... Uh, an ice sculpture, but but they're making from this block of ice uh, what looks like an axe of some kind. Uh, and as you approach, they kind of look up at you and, Yes? Are you looking to take something from my table? As they kind of speak, their breath kind of forms into the air. Uh, it's cold. It's not quite that cold here. Uh, but you can still kind of see their breath coming out. Um, and uh, he looks over here. Well? Are you looking for something? Uh, uh, we wanted to... Yes, uh, could I take one of these smaller statues? Um, well, if you would like. And he kind of points over at, at, at some of these things and he goes, If you're looking for anything in particular, these are interesting pieces. I am the Ice Chanter. I enchant the ice to give it incredible magical properties. So choose wisely. Uh, and he kind of points out over the table in front of him. And yeah, and it looks like there are a lot of what look like replicas of magical items carved from ice here. Uh, you can see like what looks like an enchanted swords with ice like engraved runes upon them. And like enchanted like rings and stuff you recognize like classic magic items like rings of protection and things like that and he goes um, so please uh, help yourself of course only one would work for anyone or if you look well, okay. if you're looking for something in particular i might be able to ice chant it for you oh uh, can, can you make paint brushes a paintbrush 
that's an interesting thing to carve. But I think I can do it. Uh, and he kind of takes a moment, and you see um, he kind of draws his hand along... Uh, he kind of draws his hand along a block of ice, and it begins shaving off just um, the lightest, uh, the lightest of threads, uh, and it almost, like, it seems to bend and gain, like, this quality about it of actual, like, hair. Uh, as he weaves together a paintbrush, it takes him about a minute, uh, to do this thing all said and done, and he finishes it, and then he starts carving another thing, like, a bowl next to it, uh, and he creates, uh, a bunch of, like, powdered ice that's within it, um, and he hands it on to you and he goes, paint with this. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, you know, I'm gonna do what the creepy old man says. Uh, I'm gonna make a painting with the ice. What do you paint? Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna make a, a portrait of him. He might like it. Um, alright, as you kind of begin kind of painting this portrait of him, uh, you, you draw it onto, uh, you draw it onto the page, uh, and as soon as you kind of finish drawing it, the painting that you were canvassing it on just kind of kind of pops, uh, and out of it a perfect ice sculpture of him just appears in 3D uh, in the manner in which you painted it. It's kind of like a monochrome, because you're painting with this ice paint, which is just one kind of, like, bluish-white color. Uh, but it seems this magic paint allows you to paint things into 3D. Well, holy shit, that's actually really interesting. <laughs> uh, he looks over at you. Um, just keep in mind... Well, it'll melt before the day's through, so use it up. Uh, do any of you want anything? He looks over the rest of you. Oh, uh, I'll take whatever's the prettiest accessory that uh, there is on the table. Uh, and you kind of are, are looking down and, and uh, going through it, and there's one, uh, it, it appears to be uh, an amulet of some kind. It's uh, kind of pointed like a star in places, and it kind of jets out at all sorts of interesting angles, uh, and as the light's hitting it, it almost is creating like rainbow refractions through the ice, whatever way it was carved, it makes almost a perfect ice prism, uh, and it kind of shimmers throughout the space, and he goes, ah yes, do enjoy. I worked quite hard on that. Thank you very much. I don't I'll... suppose you would, uh have any rods or wands already prepared, would you? Oh, a number. Uh, and he kind of reaches over and just a, sh a thin wand of pure ice uh, he hands over to you. Uh, and he goes, enjoy. I wouldn't suppose you would have anything resembling like a light crossbow, for example? Oh, a weapon. Let me think. Uh, and he kind of begins kind of cutting and, and carving into the ice that, uh, <clears throat> carving into the ice there, and he starts just perfectly creating for you, um, this light crossbow. Uh, and as he does, he also creates, um, a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of, like, pieces of ammunition for it as well, uh, and kind of lays it out in front of you, a bunch of these icy bolts, um, and... He passes it over to you after carving a few more runes into the side. You see it kind of hardens up, uh, and in the same way he threaded the string before for the paintbrush, a larger kind of thread for this as he hands you over this beautiful, icy, uh, light crossbow. It looks beautiful. I will try and not melt it. I, I don't normally get on the face. Uh, it will melt in time. All ice eventually does, but enjoy it while it lasts. I thank you. Uh, and um, he kind of nods deeply. So a happy welcome's taking to all of you then. A yeah, happy welcome's taking to you. Of course, of course. Um, and yeah, he's just kind of still in there. He just kind of leans back and goes back to working his way through, um, working his way through all of the uh, the various things that he has here. Uh, and um, continuing to carve, um, you guys are, are there kind of standing, and you got all these strange things, uh, these these odd, like, temporary magic items he's given all of you? I'll put the amulet around my neck. All right. Uh, as you wear it, you feel um, just an intense cool. It's not unpleasant. It's just... 
cold. It's it's like a strange, comforting cold. I don't want to say it's a, it's a cold that gives you warmth, but that's almost how you feel uh, as you kind of place it around your neck. Uh, should we go ask the others? Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, if that's what you want to do, where would you like to uh, go? Uh, one of the, are any of the nearby tables completely empty, like the um, mayor yeah, described? Yeah, there's the one that was the closest to you, was that one that I said looked like a blacksmith that was sitting kind of bummed out over there in the town. Sure, uh, I, I guess if, if the rest of you are okay with it, we can go over to him. Uh, I'm fine with that, um, I'm starting to get a little bit chilly here anyway. Oh yeah, I think we should say bye to this uh, creepy old ice man and go help uh, the, the, the other people. Creepy old ice man seems a little rude, but alright. And you guys step away over towards the blacksmith. Uh, and yeah, uh, as you kind of get closer, uh, he looks over at you. Um, dwarven individual and kind of says, ah, Good afternoon, all of ya. I'm afraid everything's already been taken. I had a number of pieces I'd put together, some daggers and things that I was going to give around, but unfortunately it's all gone. So, you have to try another table. Happy welcomes take it to all of you. Uh, uh, did everything? Uh, do you know who took all of it? Um, he looks back towards you. No, I'm afraid not. I, uh, well... I was just sort of standing around for a while, and I uh, I saw some folks uh, kind of perusing my wares, and there seemed to be uh, a couple of individuals didn't recognize them, and if I had to wager, I think it was them. They were short, um, had cloaks on, couldn't quite make out their faces, but they were hovering about. But over the way, he kind of points over towards a... Um, uh, he kind of points over towards a stable that's over on across the way uh, and the table that they have laid out for it uh, has a bunch of like saddles and things on it and he kind of goes I... the uh, the stable master over there was having trouble with one of his horses started going a little wild ran over to help came back turned around and everything on the table was just up and vanished that's a shame if I had only, uh, well, if I hadn't taken my eyes off the thing, I might still have all my, well, I was hoping to give it all away anyway, so hopefully they're putting it to good use, although I can't imagine anyone having a good use for, what, some odd 50 knives and daggers and things like that. Oh, I I'm sure you would be surprised at that one. And that's a surprise I don't want to learn about if that's the case. Yes, many people tend to say that. So, uh, anyway, like I said, there's nothing I can give you. Uh, well, uh, thank you anyway for your time. No problem. Uh, would you happen to know if anybody else in the area also had a similar thing happen? Uh, and he kind of looks down the way. Apparently it's a few folks. I went over and complained to uh, Mayor Gumdrops. And he uh, <clears throat> he said he'd been getting a number of these around town. Um, most of them from merchants such as myself. I know one of the biggest losses was over at the uh, kind of points uh, down the way, over at the bank there. Their welcomes taken table was well hit as hard as everyone else's, but perhaps the biggest loss. Oh, okay then. Well, thank you very much for your time, then. Uh, I'm very sorry uh, that your entire table was taken, but, uh, you know, thank you very much. No problem. Perhaps I'll just go around uh, and enjoy the festivities, uh, take some things um, from other tables. Have a good night. Too. And uh, I'll, I'll look over t towards uh, the bank, was it? Um, uh. Yes, uh, and over at the um, the bank across the way, because you're kind of in the town square. Um, over at the bank, you can see a bunch of uh, people kind of hurriedly. They're all very, like, sharply dressed. Uh, a lot of them 
you know, wearing you know shirts and ties and and kind of nobles attire suits, uh, and a lot of people are kind of like busily uh, walking around. Uh, and hurrying about, there's one individual with kind of a stern look in glasses, seems to be Elvin, uh, that's standing behind the uh, the desk as you look around. Um, there are other tables too, we kind of pointed out some other ones to you. Over on the side there's um, what looks to be a, uh, uh, what, what looks to be just like a, a baker's table perhaps that's been completely cleared. Um, also a little bit further down the way um, there's some type of artisan, you can't really tell from here, that he also pointed out that he knew was cleared, but the... Um, uh, you guys want to go over to the banker's table, or do you have anything you want to do in between? Or? Uh, didn't he say there was, like, a stable that needed help or something? Uh, the stable, he, he mentioned that he, the stable, the horses started acting up at the stable, so he went over to help the stable master, uh, and when he came back from that, uh, all of his stuff was just gone. And he wasn't really gone that long. So he didn't get a chance to uh, see. But yeah, there's the stable master, too, if you want to go over and talk to them. Well, I feel like since the bank is the bigger place, uh, there might be a lot of people around, so if maybe somebody saw uh, who it was. Uh, maybe? Do you think? Um, you could go over I feel talk. we should talk to the stable master and figure out what happened. And we may get a clue from finding out what spooked the horse. Yeah, sure, that sounds like a good idea. Um, Alright, in that case, you um, you make your way across the way over towards the Stable Master. Uh, as you get closer, you can see a um, an elderly human woman uh, who looks over at you. Good evening, all of you. I'm looking for something, need uh, a gear, gear for your horses. We've got a whole bunch of horseshoes here. Um, anything you're looking to take? We got hay uh, baled. Uh, got a big table over to the side with a whole bunch of stacks of hay bales and such, all kind of piled up. Welcome, taking after all. Help yourselves, of course. We thank you, but we were here. Uh, the, the blacksmith told us that um, your horses were quite spooked earlier. Oh yeah, um, Angrim over there, and kind of points over to the the dwarf uh, who's. Uh, kind of now thinking about walking off and goes, shame what happened. Shame what happened to him over there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we were wondering if you know what spooked the horses so much? Oh, uh, earlier on when it happened. Yeah, he mentioned he, uh, well, he got kind of mad at me, which nothing I can do about it. If the, if the horses just start to spook a little bit, there's nothing I can do really, except try and calm them down. I appreciate him coming over to help. Um, yeah, strangest thing. Uh, kind of looks over and walks into the stable uh, and points over and now kind of looks about a little bit nervously, like, oh, maybe I don't want to leave this thing alone. Has a hired hand come over and mind the table. Walk back into the stable with me. Uh, and brings you over to a, a horse. Uh, it's a pretty big-looking mare, um, kind of a, a pale whitish uh, coat, uh, and goes over and kind of pats the, uh, pats the mare on the side of the head. This is Buttercup, one of the gentlest horses here in the stable. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just started, uh, well, galloping and kicking all about. And, uh, I've never seen her act up like that before. Strangest thing, really. Isn't that right, Buttercup? And Buttercup just uh, <laughs> uh, kind of like nuzzles up against. Um, I know what she was riled up before, but she's really no harm to anyone. You can feed her if you want. Uh, hands you all sugar cubes if you want to feed the horse. But yeah, the horse does look. Uh, pretty pretty docile, kind of nuzzles affectionately against the stable master there. I'll, yeah, I'll feed a sugar cube to the horse and try and pet it. Yeah, um, as you do so, um, the horse kind of like, again, not in particular, does not seem skittish at all. Um, they nuzzle up against you, they eat the sugar cube, and start kind of like pushing their, um, kind of nuzzling up against you, almost like they're asking for more. Uh, you get the impression, Octo? Okay. So. Is there anything around the horse that looks off, or by, or something that might have spooked her, like a bug or something? Uh, go ahead and make me a investigation check as you're kind of looking around the space. Um, do you kind of like? These are terrible. Uh, oh no. <laughs> Uh, eight. All right. Yeah, you're um you're looking around and, and you're not seeing anything. I mean, there are bugs, but nothing that you think a horse would really take notice of. 
Um, nothing in particularly sticks out to you as, as you start looking around. Um, but the rest of you kind of see as starting to try and take stock of the uh, the stable. Um, she kinda uh, you know, this this is like a really nice situation. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start uh, painting. Oh, what are you gonna paint? Uh, probably just like this nice old lady and the horse group picture or something. Um, all right. Um, go ahead and make me an artist. Check with your artisan's tools. Uh, are you using your fancy new paintbrush to paint things into reality, or are you uh, just oh, making yeah, a painting? Oh yeah, definitely. This this new ice paintbrush is super neat. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, go ahead and make a check with your painter supplies. Seventeen. All right. Um, <clears throat> you paint um, as you're painting the um, uh, the woman kind of standing there. A, a perfect kind of bust of the woman appears in, in solid ice. Uh, just from like the what are you doing from like the uh, like a neck down kind of portrait of them up close? Or are you doing like a full body kind of? Uh, mostly just uh, neck down, you know. Same Not thing. Much. Same thing with the horse. Or are you doing the full horse? Yep. Okay, yeah. Yep, so yep, yep. in that case, a perfect statue of solid ice, uh, ice sculpture of both of them appears as you finish your painting, uh, and smacks down onto the ground, and the uh, the woman looks over at you. Well, that's certainly impressive. Is this? A gift? May I have this? Oh yeah, sure. You can just take it. Oh, that's lovely. That's the spirit of the season. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'll put it on the table uh, to see if anyone needs an ice sculpture. Helen, I'll enjoy it while it's there too. Thank you. Uh, and kind of goes over and slaps it onto the welcomes taking table. It makes an excellent decoration. Uh, kind of capping it off. Um, what the rest of you doing while this is going on? Because I imagine that takes you a couple minutes to to whip up this painting of the. Uh, um, I'll give the horse a little bit of a pet. Alright. Um, yeah, the horse, um, you know, the horse is affectionate. Uh, and, um... Uh, Octa, you do anything, or are you just kind of hanging right now? Uh, Octa would probably be looking about to see if anything was about, like, an arrow or a crossbow bow. Some kind of trace of fire or something like that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and also make me an investigation check. Sixteen. Okay. Um, you kind of hop into the uh, the stables with Az, and, and you begin also looking around a, a little bit, um, perhaps more carefully here. Uh, and as you are, uh, as you're kind of working your way through the stable, um, you find on the ground, um, kind of buried under some of the hay. Uh, what look like a couple of uh, a couple of caltrops, and as you're looking even closer, um, you can see that uh, the mare here they, they seem to have gotten over it, uh, but there's a couple of uh, traces of blood on the ground underneath their uh, uh, underneath their foot uh, and around the area where they're standing on one of their back uh, on one of their back feet. But it looks like it was kind of like thrown into the corner. You can see a, a drop of blood on the caltrop as well. Okay. There's a window out the hey, back guys. of the stable. Hey guys, um, I, I think I found what might have spooked the horse a little bit. Oh, oh, who would do such a terrible thing? Um, and as you are kind of having that conversation, you all of a sudden uh, hear, coming from outside, <clears throat> what sounds like an incredibly loud ringing of a... Um, uh, an incredibly ra loud ringing of a bell. Um, you notice that there was a bell tower over kind of near the church when you first sort of, uh, uh, when you first sort of arrived, but... Uh, this bell kind of goes off, um, and it rings a couple of times uh, very loudly. Um, and then a short time after that, um, which, nothing too off about it. Then you, all of a sudden, you just hear kind of a frustrated, ah! uh, kind of coming from the, uh, the town outside. Uh, what do you all do? Uh, I think uh, we'll go and we investigate hurry. the noise. I'll, I'll just use Mage Hand to pick the cow, the cow trap out of the way so that the horse doesn't get hurt by it anymore. Yeah, there's a window out the back. You just kind of, like, toss it away to the side. Um, I would probably suggest to bring it with us to see if we can get fingerprints or something of it to see if we could help him investigate a bit further as to who it might have belonged to. Um, 
very well. Um, <clears throat> right, you, so you hold on to it, uh, and you begin uh, working your way out. Uh, and uh, where you were, um, uh, wh where you are kind of standing now as, as you step outside, uh, you can see what appears to be an, another table um, that up until now, as you were walking past it previously, uh, it looked like it was all leather goods, leather armors and boots and clothings and things like that. It is now also stripped completely bare. Uh, and the owner is kind of like frustratedly like looking around, and there are a few other people in the area that are also just kind of like, maybe a little bit less purp uh, purposefully, but also kind of looking around and trying to see what must have happened. Um, but yeah, it looks like another table was literally just robbed. You can see it across the town square. Can we tell which way the bell came from? Um, the bell is in the church, which is basically across the street um, from where that particular... Um, w which is across the street from where that particular table was set up. Okay, so it's maybe somebody rung the bell. And uh, for a distraction. Um, yeah, uh, and, and the people are there kind of frustrated. The, um, the stable master kind of comes out and, and looks over to you. Um, tell me, uh, now, what is it that... Oh, looks like another one got taken, huh? What a shame. Some people have no respect for the welcomes taken season. Uh, brings a, uh, tear to my eye, really. Uh, kind of looks down a little bit sad. Um, but, uh, yeah, what do you all want to do? Uh, what's Benoru been up to? I, I'm not much of use in the sti a stable per se, but as soon as I heard that bell, I'm very keen to see if I can see anyone moving about particularly hastily now that we're outside again. Um, yeah, go ahead and make me a uh, perception check. 22. Um, Alright, so as you're looking around the space, um, there's the owner of the... Um, uh, there's the owner of the area, which they're kind of just kind of hanging out and, and looking around and trying to figure out the same thing that you are. Uh, you don't see anyone, like, running down the street carrying a bunch of, like, packages or anything. Uh, and there are a couple of alleys that are tucked around the area. Uh, but you can see, um, just for a moment, uh, as you look up and you're still kind of taking the space, uh, you see a shadowy, well, not, like, shadowy, but, like, you just see the outline of someone kind of quickly moving. You can't really make anything details out from this distance. Um, but they seem to be ducking down into the bell tower on top of the... Uh, um, <clears throat> they seem to be ducking down into the bell tower on top of the church. Well, uh, that looks like a, a clue or something. We've got two choices. You can either keep reacting to every distraction and situation that we come across, hoping to catch up to the enemy before they get away, or we can remain extremely active, spread out a bit, and just keep our eyes peeled on every single table until something happens again. Neither one sounds particularly good, but they are two steps ahead of us. What's the, uh, what's the play? Uh, uh, wait, uh, did Minora tell everybody else about the, uh... Yeah, I think the... it's, I think it's safe to assume that Minoru shared that information oh, yeah, based definitely. on what they said, yeah. Okay, so, uh, maybe we could, we could, uh, check out where, uh, the bell tower, because that's where the, the last distraction was. Do you want to go right up to the bell tower, then? If the others are okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you want. Like, you see this happens right now. Um, so it's definitely a little tense as Minoru, you kind of call out and, and, and point this thing out. Uh, and then do all of you want to just rush right over and, and try and get up into this church? As good a plan as any. All right, so you... Uh, w before we go, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna grab a, a horseshoe off this table real quick. Excellent. You... 
grab onto one horseshoe. The stable master goes, happy welcomes taking. Uh, and you uh, dutch and duck and run over to the uh, church, which is kind of not quite in the center of the square. It's starting to get into, like, a, a break-off street. Uh, and you go and, and run up to this church. Uh, and as you get closer... Um, you go to the front door, uh, and the church actually appears to be closed down. Uh, it is uh, seemingly abandoned. Um, there is uh, no one really guarding the door, but as you go up to it, the door is, is locked. Um, what would you all like to do? How complicated is this lock? Uh, it's a simple, uh, it's just a simple door lock. Um, it has a, it has like a, a regular keyhole. It doesn't seem, it seems like basically it's about as standard as a lock could get. Anyone have anything thin with them, a bobby pin or something? And I have crossbow bolts. Uh, and as you're, um, uh, as you're kind of like loitering outside in the. Um, uh, in the kind of doorway of the church here, there's a couple of steps that lead up to the door. A guard kind of calls out to you. You there? Are you the ones that rang the church bell? Not allowed oh, to go in there, you know. We we were trying to find out who who it was that rang it. Excuse me, sir. We're uh, with Bartholomew's adventuring troop, and, and you do the uh, you do the like flash the badge. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, and, he, and he looks at you. Uh, go ahead and make a. Is this a, what, what check would you say this is? Are you just trying to like? Um, just trying to talk him into letting us do our thing. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Twenty. Uh, he kind of looks down. He kind of looks over at you, and he goes, "Oh, Bartholomew's adventures. That's above my pay grade. I'm sorry to bother you." Uh, and kind of steps away and just kind of. <laughs> over to the side like I don't want anything to do with this um, enjoy your holiday sir happy welcomes taking um, yeah and you guys are at the door uh, now trying to uh, presumably shim it open um, you said you opt your hand him over a crossbow bolt yes uh, all right you hand over uh, are, are you using one of those um, ice icy crossbow bolts uh, no I have a light crossbow already I was just handing him out a normal okay. bolt. Uh, you hand him over one of the uh, the steel ones, uh, and you're gonna try and like shimmy the lock open with this thing. Um, go ahead and make me a. Um, is that what you're doing, Minoru? Or do you have a different plan? Th that was my plan, basically, is to try to lock it with a bolt. Yeah, certainly. I don't really have these tools. <laughs> Fair enough. Go ahead and make me a sleight of hand check. I think you're at disadvantage because it's not really the right tool for the job, but it's possible with this. Uh, 11. Uh, you're kind of like shimmying the lock, and, and there's a couple of times where you feel like you almost got it, uh, but you kind of realize as, as you're kind of digging around in the uh, the lock here, it's probably not gonna... It's, it's probably not gonna work out the way that you want it to. Um, it's just a little bit too large to fit in deep enough to, to get the exact uh, the exact, like, click that you're hoping to get it to have, uh, and open it open. Open it open is on my new catchphrase. That's what I'm gonna say when I open doors from now on. So yeah, it, it doesn't look like it's gonna pan out with this crossbow bolt. Well, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna make this simple real quick. I'm gonna paint a key with the uh, ice paint <laughs> Uh Excellent. Go ahead and make a check with your artisan's tools. Fourteen. Uh, all right. Yeah. So you kind of like lean over and, and look and peer inside the lock and try and get an idea of, of what the shape that you need for it is. And you paint a quick key, which whoop, manifests and becomes solid. You stick it into the lock and <coughs> it opens up without issue. Uh, the doors kind of uh, kind of spread and, and swing open into the church beyond, uh, and you can see it is. Uh, very dimly lit. Um, some of the windows here are boarded up, uh, and only kind of rays of light are flashing over like the dusty pews. Um, you all step in and, and begin to kind of come into the space. What are all of your passive perceptions? Uh, I have eleven. Thirteen. Twelve. Twelve. Um, so only Minoru 
uh, only you notice um, just the slight kind of creaking on the floorboards above you. The building is old and definitely has some groans, uh, but there's some uh, there's some consistency to it as you're listening up above you uh, that speaks of footsteps trying to move quietly above you, uh, but maybe not necessarily succeeding all that much. You can see there's a stairway over on the side leading up to a higher floor, as well as a couple of doors leading out of the back of this um, little kind of church here. I'd like Is there to anything up the stairway? Oh, you're just gonna full barrel up ahead. Yep. All right. So have them getting away again. Uh, as you start to uh, as you start to like take off and run, um, the second you do that, you all now hear the sound of footsteps. Um, sort of heavily running across the ground as they kind of can tell that they've been found out by you guys running uh, as they <clears throat> uh, begin running above. I'd like you all to roll for initiative. Ooh, okay. All right. Uh, as all of you begin kind of taking off, um, Minoru, you kind of kick things into action. You all see Minoru's just kind of like standing silent for a moment, listening upwards, and then they bolt and begin running up the stairs to the second floor of the church. Uh, the first to act is you, Okta. Minoru, you have a little bit of a jump since you kind of kicked things off. Um, very first thing I'm going to do is take out uh, my packed weapon and uh, kind of like just charge towards the stairs. Uh, all right, you're just gonna run upstairs as quick as you can. Yes. All right, so you run over to and up these stairs. Um, you can see that uh, Minoru is already kind of uh, nearing uh, nearing the top as you get there, and, and you are also at the top of the stairs. Uh, as you reach this point, you can hear over in the other room. Um, you can hear very clearly just the heavy sounds of, of footsteps on old wood, uh, and it seems to be coming from a room that is further on within the space. You can also see, like, some lattice leading upwards, uh, and, like, a ladder that leads up to the bell tower, like, a, a long vertical, uh, a long kind of vertical shaft there, uh, but they're moving more laterally towards what would be the back of the church. Um, and, yeah, you use your turn to run up to the stairs. Uh, that's going to bring us next to... Uh, as what do you want to do, as? Uh, I will use my movement and my action to uh, get my speed to 60, and I'll go as far as I can towards the sound right. of the running. So you're right up next to uh, you're right up next to Octa as you end your turn, uh, which is going to bring us next to uh, the foe turn. Uh, and the foe, you know, they continue to run away. You can't quite see what they are doing, uh, but they're uh, presumably trying to run away. You hear their footsteps receding from you uh, as we move next to. Uh, Bug. What do you want to do, Bug? Alright, uh, how far away are they, would you say, exactly? Um, precisely? I mean, it's, to get up to, like, the top of the stairs and a little bit into space is 60 feet, um, but you can't, like, see where they are, so you don't know beyond that point. To get up, but to get up to, like, where Okta and, uh, Azar would take 60 feet of movement. Uh, but you have more movement because you're a monk, right? Yup. All right, so do you want to just, like, bolt after? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to dash. I'm just going to sprint. Okay, uh, you sprint up the stairs, uh, and as you kind of reach the top, you um moving even quicker, because I think this is all happening at once. So you guys actually probably see Bog, like, running ahead of you uh, as you move like, uh, move like lightning up to the top and then into... Um, a few steps down the hallway, you kind of poke your head into the room where it seems like they're coming from, uh, and you can see... Um, you can see sitting over at the window. Uh, currently, their hand looks, like, a little bit bloody, uh, and they have punched a hole in the glass at the top of this room, uh, and there is a character dressed in all kind of in black with uh, uh, kind of a hood over their head, relatively short, not unlike the description that the blacksmith earlier gave you, uh, that's trying to, like, break out this window here and climb down the outside of the building. Um, 
And that's going to be... Uh, I'm sorry, do you have anything else on your turn? You still have a bonus action if you wish to use it. Oh, no, that's it. I give up there. All right. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us to Minoru. Minoru, you kind of start off at the top of the stairs, so you can get up into that room if you want to. Yes, I'm going to I'm going to run right in there. I'm already grabbing my uh, new ice wand or rod? Uh, wand. I've got the ice wand in hand as I bolt into the room. Okay, uh, you step into the room, um, and what do you uh, what do you wish to do? You can see this figure that's, like I said, trying to break their way through and out the window. I'll give you one chance. Exactly one chance. Step away from the window and you won't be hurt. Um, go ahead and uh, make an intimidation check. Sixteen. Alright. Um, they're still kind of have their back to you and, and, and they're kind of like slowly like putting their hands up on their sides. Uh, but uh, you said, do you have an action as well? Um, you're kind of coming into the room. Um, if I still have an action, I'm just going to ready to fire off a magic missile if they don't step away from the wind on their turn. Um, okay, are you using that ice wand to do that when you do so? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, Alright, they're standing there with their hands kind of, they're slowly like raising them into the air. Uh, that's going to bring us next in initiative to the top, which is you, Okta. Uh, I'm just going to um, move towards the room. All right, yeah, you can and, step up uh, into the room, um, and you see the scene that's laying out. You could, you hear uh, Minoru kind of make this uh, proclamation, like, don't move or you're in trouble. Um, you see the person standing at the window. What do you want to do? Um, at this point, I'm just going to take out the ice sculpture of light crossbow and just kind of load it up with an ice bolt and point it at him. All right, you're ready in action Waiting to fire, to fire as well. Just in case. All right. Uh, as soon as he goes towards the window, I'm firing. Uh, in that case, um, that is going to be. Uh, that is going to bring us to the faux turn, I believe. Oh wait, is it bog first? No, it's faux turn first. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> they um, kind of are, are slowly moving their hands up into the air, uh, and then they kind of go. Looks like you caught me. Psych! Uh, and he kind of puts his hand on the rail of the window as he kind of has his hands up in the air and leans back and tries to kick through the glass and just jump out the side of the building. Both of you have readied actions. Uh, go ahead and make your attack roll. Uh, and you're, a, uh, you're casting Magic Missile. Um, I would actually like you to make me an attack roll. Just real quick, um, uh, as was uh, had an initiative of eleven. The dude had a. Oh, I'm sorry. It should have been you first. Um, that has yeah. not. <laughs> we're we're in limbo time. Um, my mistake. Uh, so as sorry. uh, you walk into the room before this happens, what would you wish to do? Uh, I'll cast sleep on the guy. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me the uh the sleep. Uh, there you go. Twenty-one hit points. Um, you go and as soon as you enter in the room, you throw out your kind of sleeping spell. But unfortunately, this individual has more than twenty-one hit points. Uh, they are Ooh, unable okay. to be put to sleep. Uh, so the spell kind of puffs into the space, uh, but um, they do not fall, uh, which is going to now bring us to the thing that happens. You have readied actions. You fire your light crossbow. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. That absolutely hits. Uh, your crossbow that you're given, apparently it's a plus three light crossbow. You deal an extra three damage on top of that. So that's, oh, that's 16 points of damage. Um, and Minoru, um, I would like you to actually make me a spell attack roll. All right. I'm, I'll roll intelligence then. That worked. Um, well, plus proficiency, but yes. Oh, that'd be ten still. Um, 
10 plus an extra 3, but that's still not going to quite hit. In that case, just roll me your regular little magic missile. Uh, wait, is that the whole magic? No, it can't be. That's just one. Uh, that's, that's just one missile. That's not... Uh, so a total of 11 points of force damage as your magic missiles three magic missiles kind of course out and also you didn't really think because you weren't really aiming it but as you kind of throw this wand out towards you you watch as just an incredible like bolt of cold begins to uh, kind of coalesce at the end of the wand and flies out and crashes into the wall with a tremendous amount of force uh, it seems like you cast the chromatic orb spell alongside of your magic missile uh, and it just kind of exploded in ice, but it didn't make contact, because you didn't know it was going to happen. Um, and also, Octa, this crossbow, it's got a really nice heft to it. It was, like I said, a plus three crossbow. Um, and as the, um, uh, as these kind of things ricochet, uh, and, uh, kind of, you know, blast and, and connect, uh, he gets hit for 16 points of damage, but then he's going to, he kicks open the glass. Uh, you can see some of the glass also cuts him on the way out. And he's going to fall a, a fair distance um, <laughs> as he's falling out of the building. We'll see if he's still standing after all of this. Uh, he's still up. <laughs> um, wow. And they kind of like tumble down and you hear kind of a... Uh, as they land on the street. Uh, and then they begin kind of running down the street away. Um, you can see they're just like starting to like turn around an alley from the window. Uh, as they just completely book it out of the room. Uh, Bog. All right, so uh, they're clearly getting away. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dash, use my step of wind, and I'm gonna move. I think that's uh, 120 feet. Yeah. Um, you're gonna d d chase out the window after them. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, oh, your jump distance is, di since your jump distance is doubled, you still have a long way to fall, but I'm gonna let you make an acrobatics check to try and have the damage on this fall. So go ahead and roll me an acrobatics check as you step of the wind and do this sick jump out the window. Um, 10, unfortunately, is not quite going to get you there. You're still going to take the falling damage. Um, I'm sorry, it should be 3d6. So roll two more. Uh, you take 10 points of falling damage as you <laughs> crash down to the ground out the window. Uh, but then you <laughs> begin running and chasing after, and, and with your bonus action, um, as your bonus action dash, you are able to catch up to them as they're kind of rounding the corner. You still have an action. What would you like to do? Alright, well, uh, can I try to grapple them? Oh, yes, absolutely. Go ahead and make an athletics check, which will be contested by their... Uh, their acrobatics is actually pretty good, uh, but... I wish you the best of luck. Ooh, 20 is still really good. Oh, they barely match. Oh, you go and, um... Uh, you go and grab onto them and try and hold them into place, but they wriggle, and right when you think they got them, they just ugh, barely break three. Uh, the tie, unfortunately, goes to the defender on that. Um, anything else on your turn? Oh, uh, no, that should be it. Uh, all right. That is going to bring us next in initiative to... The top of the initiative. Um... Uh, you can see out the window beyond um, Okta. Um, they're just kind of rounding a corner. You can see Bog has kind of got them a little bit locked down over by this uh, over by this back alley. Uh, but they're kind of behind half cover at this point. What would you like to do? Um, go over to the window and roughly how far away would they be from me? Uh, at this point, about 60 feet. 60 feet. Uh... I'm just going to cast an Elgin Blast at the guy then. Yeah, absolutely. Fire away. 19 will hit despite the cover. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Nice roll. 8 points of force damage. Uh, it <laughs> hits them in kind of the side and they <laughs> spin a little bit. And they stagger, but they're still barely holding on. Um, anything else on your turn, Octa? Uh, no, that would do. Alright, that's going to bring us... Next in initiative to... Uh, it would have been... Oh, I'm sorry, Minoru, you got skipped because you were last in the initiative. Wait, am I correct about that? Yeah. Um... Things got, I think things got a little bit jumbled. I think the, when I missed the other one, it got jumbled. But Minoru, I think it should be your turn by now. It was the, uh, it was the ready to actions, I think, that got things mixed up. Yeah, I, I can oh. understand. <laughs> 
it's complicated. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. Anyway, but it's your turn. What do you want to do? Uh, half cover, you said. Half cover. Well, I I don't think magic missile cares about that. Magic and missile. I'm pretty sure magic missile has a range of 120 feet. Uh, magic missile definitely does not care about that. Just go ahead and roll that magic missile damage for me. Uh, all right. Um, there's a chromatic orb that comes with this too, but it doesn't matter because uh, the magic missiles all kind of fly and connect. The chromatic orb crashes, but they're already down uh, as Bog right in front of you. You're kind of holding on, grappling them, and then you just see them take these three kind of, actually four heavy hits because the Eldritch Blast too, uh, and they kind of crumple in your arms, Bog. Man, that kind of sucks. I would hate to be him right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's uh, he's also he's definitely like dying in your arms, very literally, uh, as you're kind of out here on the streets. Uh, there's a couple of people behind you that are kind of like looking over curiously, like, "Oh, what's going on over here? This looks really suspicious." Uh, what do you do? Uh, and I think we're out of well, initiative. We're out of initiative at this point. You guys can all just kind of tell me generally what you're doing since you've taken this guy down. Uh, I'm going to try to make sure he doesn't uh. Die! <laughs> That's a great idea. Go ahead and make a medicine check. Oh, you succeed. Uh, you stabilize him. Uh, you kind of put him down and uh, just do some quick field medicine from where he's uh, bleeding probably in a lot of places from taking all these magical blasts here at the end. Uh, and you kind of lay him down on the ground. He's completely out cold at the moment. Can I try and... Uh... Pat him awake. Um, all right. Should, uh, uh, yeah, you go over and um, you go over and, and go to um, pat him awake. Uh, and as you get closer to this uh, this down individual, uh, your the amulet that's kind of around your neck it begins to like grow, give you that kind of warm feeling. It starts to like radiate a little bit of light. Oh, okay. What would you like to uh, What would you like to do? Is he... he's awake now, right? Um, currently, no. He's just completely unconscious. Or... No, you guys oh, okay. you guys beat the hell out of him. He's, he's out cold right now. <laughs> Look, I shouldn't have run. But you're... <laughs> it seems like he didn't know that. Uh, he thought that was his best move, but apparently it was not. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, yeah, this, this amulet's kind of like giving off this energy right now. Uh, what happens if I touch my amulet? Um, you feel some of that light uh, that was starting to like grow around the amulet. Uh, it kind of appears within your hand, and you now seem to be holding on to it. It has like a physical cold presence about it. Wow. Uh, what happens if I uh, if I uh, put it on top of the 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 guy? Um, you want to put it on top of the unconscious individual? Yeah, um, just curious. All right, you kind of place your hand, and the light, the second you kind of place your hand on this individual, it <laughs> disappears from your hands, and you see for a second uh, his hair kind of starts to, like, glow a little bit, uh, and his eyes kind of open up suddenly in a start. <laughs> as you have healed him. You're not sure for how much, but you've definitely healed this individual. <laughs> um, and this guy... <laughs> You got me. Hey, okay. So, I know that you can take whatever you want, right? But you should leave some for other people, because everybody wants to take part and have fun here. He kind of looks. Uh, he kind of looks around at the four of you. His eyes are kind of like darting back pretty quickly. You see, he's like almost looking around for a quick. Uh, like escape or something, but I mean, you're, he's pretty hopelessly surrounded as it stands because you guys are all. Are you guys just all like toughing him? Uh, just kind of stand like arms crossed in him. Like, what's your what's your setup here? I'm just I'm... kneeling down with him. Okay, you're at eye level. <laughs> if I actually notices that he's looking for a quick escape, he's just going to bring out a pack with him, okay. point it to his throat, and say, "Don't." Um, yeah, they appear to be a uh, they appear to be a halfling, and they go. All right, it seems that you've uh, cornered me a bit here. Tell me, what's your game? I ain't breaking any rules, I'm just ringing bells. 
we know you're working for someone. We could have avoided all this pain for you if you had just cooperated originally. Now, you have another choice. You can keep resisting, and there will be more pain. Or you can tell us who you're working for, and what they're trying to do, and there will be less pain. <laughs> you want to know who I'm working for? Uh, go ahead and make me an intimidation check with advantage, because literally, I think literally everyone is helping you here. Uh, <laughs> Cross crossbows in like twelve. I can look so. <laughs> you want to know who I'm working for, huh? I'll tell you this: there's some questions that you don't want answered, some doors upon which shouldn't be knocked. I promise you this: the person I'm working for, the tip top of the tip top. That's right. This thing goes all the way up. I, I'm going to use Druidcraft and uh, put a flower on his nose. <laughs> uh, you put a flower on his nose, uh, and his kind of hands are at his side, and he still seems kind of exhausted. And he's just now, like, as it lands on his nose, he just, hey, get get that thing off, <laughs> and starts trying to like bl uh, air it off, but it's it's on there pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this feels a little okay, bit humiliating, I'll... especially after I said my big cool thing. I'll, I'll put another. I'll put like three more flowers on him. It's bing, everywhere. Bing, bing. Uh, three more flowers kind of crop up. And he's kind of like just shaking his head to the side now. What do you want from me? Come on, just just be honest. There's no harm in saying the truth. All right. Jesus, the the mayor hired me and my friends. To Take all the stuff. Ugh. Mayor? Uh, he goes, yeah, the mayor. I said it goes all the way to the top. That's about as top as it goes here. Huh. Unless someone else would like to, I'd like to make an insight check on this. Uh, go ahead and make an insight check. Um... You've got no fucking clue. This guy's very frustrated. He seems, like, distracted at this point. He's trying to blow flowers off, get flowers off of his face. Uh, he's really not. Uh, it's tough, tough to say. Uh, Can I try and intimidate him into seeing if he's telling the truth? Uh... I, I mean, he's, he's, a he's intimidated. He's pointed to his throat. He's, I mean, he's already pretty intimidated. Uh, these flowers are maybe making him less intimidated and more frustrated. Uh, he seems to maybe have forgotten his position a little bit. I'll, I'll let you give it a try as you put the, uh, as you put the the sword to his throat. Uh, Twelve. Um, I mean, he doesn't like having the sword to his throat. He goes, "All right, all right, all right, easy, easy." I told you what you wanted to know, didn't I? Yes, but I have a feeling you're not telling us the whole truth. What? I pretty much am. Hmm. Well, if the mayor wanted uh, us to bring him to him, well, maybe we should just pick him up and go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, alright. Uh, you're going to, uh... Uh, you're gonna take this individual and, and bring him back over to the mayor? Yeah. Uh, and he goes, um, well, uh, alrighty then, if that's what you want to do with me. Uh, and he kind of, like, stands up and, yeah, he seems pretty, uh, he, he seems alright, he's kind of basically stopped resisting. That wasn't too hard, was it? Uh, he goes, uh, no, not hard at all. Uh, let's, um, I guess, I guess I'll be arrested then. Uh, and he starts walking over to the town with you guys. Uh, can we find the mayor? Yep. Uh, and you find the mayor. The mayor is still kind of busily, um, uh, the mayor is still kind of busily going about and getting things, uh, uh, getting things ready for the day. Uh, and as you kind of come back, uh, he sees the four of you walking up with this individual. Do you, like, tie him up? Or he's just kind of walking. Uh, you just bring him over. I'll just let him walk. Alright. Um, yeah, I think at this point he's 
realizes that he's not getting away from us. Yeah. Um, he uh, he kind of walks over, and the mayor looks over at the group of you and, and goes, um, Well, 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 what do we have here? It seems like you've all done quite a job. Yeah, and about that, Mr. Mayor, um, we have a couple of questions we'd like to ask. Well, certainly, ask away! Uh, I'm going to turn to the, the halfling again and say, uh, do you mind repeating what you told us a, a little bit earlier? Uh, and the uh, the halfling kind of goes, all right, um, I stole everything for the Welcome to Taking Festival. It was me. Sorry I did it. It was completely within the law, and you have no right to execute me. The, uh, the mayor kind of looks over and goes, Well, looks like this one's wrapped up pretty neatly. He said he did it. I guess I'll take it from here. All right, then. <laughs> I'll, just, <laughs> I'll nudge the halfling towards him, and uh, when he's not looking, I'll just put another flower on his back. All right. Uh, and he goes, um, So, um, I guess that's it. You can all, uh, you can all go home. I'll pay you your money. Uh, and he kind of, like, takes this halfling over. This here was the thief and culprit over of the entire festival. Uh, he has apologized. Uh, and he kind of, like, you see him then kind of, like, elbow this halfling. And the halfling kind of goes, I'm deeply regretful for what I have done. It was against the welcome's taking spirit. Or something. Uh, the mayor kind of goes, he's very sorry, as you can see. And I'm sure we'll be able to find where he put all of those things and, and get them back. Uh, and they start to kind of start talking, and uh, he hands each of you your 100 Bartholomew bucks, uh, and kind of says, um, <clears throat> "All right, well, excellent job." Uh, and my question for the four of you now is: you can tell that this is decidedly a suspicious situation, uh, but you've also been paid, <laughs> so <laughs> the choice is the choice is yours about. <laughs> Uh, kind of what you want to do here, uh, but you have technically completed this adventure in a way that I did not foresee. <laughs> Which is... Acta just thinks to herself there's no way she's getting paid high enough to kill a male. <laughs> um... <laughs> is this not bothering anyone else? Yeah, you guys have, like, a second to have a conference. Do you guys... Like, what is your decision as a group? Uh, do you want to, like, go after this weird situation, or do you just take the money and run? I mean, I half of Acta really wants to just set them on fire. <laughs> I mean, you know, for, for the greater good, I guess. Something like that. I also, we could get paid double. I don't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good. Um, so, just to be clear, we're attacking the mayor is what I'm hearing. We're... confronting the mayor. Whether right. it well, we're giving him a stern talking to. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Actor says that look, we're going to regret this, but ah, ah well, then on you go. Uh, the, the mayor's kind of like, I'm gonna bring this one over to the town hall where we can speak to him a bit more. Uh, and he's kind of like, you know, making a show of that as he walks him across town and, and wanders into a building that you assume is the town hall. Uh, and... Um, you know, the guards kind of let him past, and, um, he, he's kind of, while you guys are having this discussion, he's, he's moved over to there. Um, do you guys all, you guys go up to the town hall? Well, uh, yeah. Follow him. Um, alright, yeah, um, the two, uh, the two guards on either side of the door as, as you approach, um, they both kind of, both of them are, are wielding spears, and they kind of do the classic spear cross, and um, one of them looks over at the group and says, Sorry. Mayor's business told me no one in. Oh uh, well, you see, we are actually, in fact, part of that business, and he told us to come in uh, around uh, two minutes later. So, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Make a deception check. Just... <laughs> it's a pretty blatant one. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna help him on this by pointing out how the mayor did hire us to capture someone that's been running around pr town causing trouble, and. We gotta make sure that the mayor isn't harmed by this person. 
Uh, go ahead and make me an additional deception check, Bog. You have advantage because you're being helped. Uh, Alright, you know what? It's the attempt that matters. Yeah, uh, he kind of, they kind of look over at you and they just says, the other one just kind of says, Mayor said no visitors, so no visitors. All right, well, anyone else want to try that? <laughs> uh, and, and, I mean, at this point, they've just kind of locked themselves in, and they're just not really letting anyone through. It's like, you don't think further being just, like, making shit up would let them, uh, would, would put them down. And B, left or right. Uh, and B what? Uh, I'm just asking everyone else around me. Plan B, left or right. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh... <laughs> we can't lie all the way through. Axel's gonna try and persuade them to let us through. Alright, you're gonna need to have a pretty convincing reason. Uh, be just awful. saying that we were hired by Bartholomew, flashed the badge. We are just here to make sure that the mayor is completely safe, and... Um... Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. This is not going to be an easy one to pull. Because like I said, they're already pretty like, we're not letting you in. They seem to have kind of made up their minds in that regard. Uh, <laughs> but with a 25 <laughs> with disadvantage, they've already made up their minds. But somehow your lies and, and what's the word I'm looking for? Your words. Glib words, there we are. Uh, somehow pierce through this veil of... And this veneer of them just deciding that you can't go in. Uh, and one of them kind of looks over you and goes, Wait, are you in on this thing too? You working for the... I'm sorry, I, I thought that you guys were just like do-gooders or something, but you're part of the whole You're part of the whole thing. Yeah, come on in, come on in. Uh, and they kind of open up the... Uh, they kind of open up the door. Uh, and, and go on and <laughs> let you in. <laughs> you monstrous roll. <laughs> one of those, one of those reality-changing D and D rolls. Um, Couldn't have went any better. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, uh, you guys kind of step on in, uh, and you can see the mayor beyond. Um, and in there, you can also see um, this uh, this halfling character who's kind of there talking to them animatedly. Uh, and the mayor's going, "You told those." Bozos that it was me that hired you? Uh, and the uh, the guy's kind of responding, well, I don't know what you want me to do. They had a sword right and pressed up against my throat and all kinds of crazy ice powers and I died for a minute. I was in a tough situation. I don't care if you were in a tough situation. We're in a tough situation now. If we're going to pull this thing off. Uh, and they kind of, he kind of like as he's in the middle of this sentence kind of looks over. If we're going to pull this thing off, we're going to send you right on to jail and to get that loot, to give it back to all those people who stole it, as he kind of looks at all of you as you come in. What do you all do? I got it then. <laughs> Someone else can take over. Uh, no, what are all of you the doing mayor. here? The mayor is supposed to serve at the pleasure of the people, not the other way around. Uh, that's what I'm doing. That's do an insight. That's that. me. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, insight. There we go. He's fucking, he's fucking flustered and lying. It's very clear that he's lying. <laughs> uh, and he, he goes. That's the way I choose to do things. Why don't you come on in and we can talk about it more? Sounds good. An honest man should have an honest handshake, so what do you say? Shake hands? Um, yeah. And he kind of like holds his hand out. He's like just, he's just like standing in the room that he's currently in, which is like... 30 feet away. He just, like, holds out his hand kind of awkwardly towards you. If I can, I'm just gonna walk up and uh, shake his hands, but I have... Uh, 
<laughs> just something extra up my sleeve. Okay. Uh, as you get about halfway across the room, he kind of puts his hand down to his side and he goes, It looks like I've let you see a little bit too much. Guards! Uh, and uh, from kind of the side of the room, you see a couple more of those uh, kind of cloaked individuals, presumably the other ones that were working to steal things, and the two guards from outside step into the room uh, and they go, uh, one of them goes, what is it, boss? Take these nosy goofuses out. Uh, and the guards kind of like shut the door behind them. I'd like you all to roll for initiative. You should have <laughs> taken the money and ran, <laughs> says the mayor. Mayor Gumdrops. Uh, and in that case, the, um, the first to act is going to be, once I find where my, everything's out of, everything's out of control, uh, all is falling apart around me, uh, <laughs> there it is. Very good. Uh, the first to act is going to be, wow, uh, no two ways about that. You want to do Minoru? Just, uh, I should have done this a little bit earlier, but a pre preparatory uh, mage armor. All right. And blade song. Okay. Uh, you begin to uh, you begin to blade dance, uh, as well as or blades blade sing. I'm sorry, blade sing, uh, as well as you put up a protective uh, magical armor around yourself. As we move next in initiative to Scotty. Uh, what would Octa like to do? Uh, Octa's just going to cast Witch Bolt on the mail. Uh, <laughs> good, good move. Strong start. Uh, ten is unfortunately going to miss. Um, as you kind of look down, the mayor, uh, it hits him right in the chest. But you see the mayor's kind of candy clothing that they're wearing. Uh, with those, like, gumdrops on the shoulders, they're actually, like, a breastplate. Uh, and they're pretty solid as the witch bolt kind of reflects off of it and crashes into a wall elsewhere. Uh, anything else on your turn, Octa? Um, she's just gonna take a light curve to it and point it out. Um, alright. Uh, you take your, uh, light crossbow out and aim it. Uh, as we move next in initiative to number, uh, it would be the... Uh, guards turns. Uh, the guards are going to step up, um, and they're going to run over uh, and go after you guys at the back line. I think one's going to go after you, Minoru, and one's going to go after you, Octo, since you're the two that have kind of taken, shown that you're got ill intent so far. So that's against you, Minoru. That's a 13. It's the second damage. They're two handing these. Uh, 13 hit, Minoru. My AC is 19 right now. That does not okay. get you. Uh, and then Octai is guessing a 5 doesn't get you. Uh, no. Um, and then the, uh, the two over on the, um, <clears throat> uh, the two over on the side of the room, uh, they kind of fan in and their turn is getting up to you. But those two other, there's two more halflings here that enter in, uh, and they're part of the fray now as well. Uh, and then it's going to bring us to Mayor Gumdrops, who kind of reaches into their, uh, <laughs> reaches into their kind of pocket, pulls out a rapier, and then ducks behind cover and just calls out, You'll never take me alive! Uh, and that's all for the Mayor's turn, as they're hiding currently. Uh, and that's going to bring us to the next initiative, which was Bog. Bog, what do you want to do? All right, so uh, my plan so far is to just just beat the fuck out of one of those thugs, honestly, man. Uh, all right, <laughs> punch away. Use your punches. Right, I'm gonna and make kicks a, and attacks. I'm gonna make uh, three unarmed attacks. A flurry of blows. Please do. Uh, swing away. Twenty will hit. Thirteen will miss. And a twenty. Are these... These shouldn't be an advantage, should they? Uh, no. Let me just... 
<laughs> no, they, they shouldn't, no. Okay, so the 20 will hit, the 10 will miss, but the 14 will hit. Um, 13 points of damage. Also, there should have only been three attacks, right? It wasn't, or was it actually four attacks? Uh, no, it was only three. Okay, uh, cool. That was just my bed. Oh, good. And um, uh, with that, I'm also going to use my Agile Parry. I also got these cool boxing gloves out, and uh, yeah. Um, so with your two strikes, actually, your one-two punch, bam, bam, you kind of catch him once in the face. He kind of gets thrown to the side. The second one catches, uh, and he kind of, for a second, kind of rights himself and goes to swing at you with his spear, and then just uh, falls over unconscious as you did it exa uh, exactly uh, this individual's health. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and that's oh, all. Oh yeah, and I'm also using that uh, agile parry or whatever. Let me just put the. Uh, okay, <laughs> cool. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us next in initiative to As. What do you want to do, As? Uh, first thing, I'm going to use Tides of Chaos to give myself advantage. Okay. And second thing, uh, I'm going to uh, look at the healthiest looking guard. Uh, yeah, those, those two kind of coming around in from the sides look a little bit tougher. I will, look, I will take at one of them and throw a Chaos Bolt. Uh, 16 is going to hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. All right. Uh, that's gonna be so. Fifteen points of damage. Fifteen points of uh, thunder damage. Thunder damage. As it, the chaos bolt flies over. It's kind of shifting in air. Lightning, fire, cold. Lightning, fire, thunder. Oof, it explodes in there. Uh, kind of explodes in their face, and they kind of rear back a little bit. Uh, they're still kind of raring to go, uh, but it's definitely a pretty meaty chunk. They don't think they could take many of that. Um, anything else on your turn? I'll just, uh, scoot, uh, back a little bit so I'm in between all of the others. Okay, um, you try and find yourself a nice, uh, defensive position in the middle of the party, uh, as we go back around to the top of the initiative, which I believe is you, Minoru. Um, there's one of these guards that's still up in your face, uh, the other one went down, and then there's two of these guys that have come over from the side, uh, which are also kind of here in the middle, flanking you guys from either side. What do you want to do? There's a mayor it's hiding like, far ahead, too. Uh, are, are there's three right up to me, or just one right up to me? Um, there's one that's opportunity attacking you, there's two that are very close to you, and then there's the mayor, which is up ahead. Uh, Who I is? have a slight question, because I'm still... There's a couple things about Wizards I'm still not used to. Since I have a, a like an actually nice, fancy wand right now, can I cast cantrips through that? Yeah, it's uh, plus three. Okay. Then, um, not to damage, just to the. I understand. Uh, I'm just gonna touch the wand with the one right up to me, and sh shocking grasp. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Go ahead and roll that uh, damage because that's absolutely going to hit. Oof. Uh, one point of lightning damage uh, as you kind of reach out to this guard. Um, you kind of touch the wand to them, and the lightning kind of <laughs> shoots through and. <laughs> Uh, for a brief second, they're stunned a little bit, but doesn't look like it did a, an immense amount of damage to them. But they don't provoke opportunity attacks if you want to move. I know you're just doing your job, but do yourself a favor and stay out of this. And uh, I'm just going to course right over towards where I, the last place I saw the mayor at. Um, okay, yeah, the mayor kind of ducked around the corner, uh, and as you... Uh, as you kind of walk into the room where the mayor is... Um, you can see that he was just hiding around the door frame, uh, and as you walk in, he kind of calls out to you. Because I can't find him. Where are you, Mayor? Uh, he calls out to you. Mayor, sneak attack! <laughs> and he's gonna stab at you. Oh, wow! He does really good. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Ow. Uh, he had advantage on that. Just want to make sure he doesn't crit. Okay, he's good. Uh, you take seven points of piercing damage as he just kind of ha -ha! jumps out and stabs you with his rapier. Um, that's all for your turn. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, uh, <laughs> that's gonna uh, bring us next in initiative two. Um, 
Octo, what do you want to do? Can I currently see the mayor? Um, no, the mayor's around the corner. Uh, he's kind of behind, he's behind total cover, so you'd have to walk up, which means you would provoke an opportunity attack from one of these, uh, from one of these halflings. Uh, yeah, I'll just walk up. You're gonna take the attack? All right. Uh, the halfling will make an attack roll with a short sword. Oh, wow, that's a really good roll. Um, that's a nine... That's nine points of damage. I assume in twenty-five hits. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to take my reaction and cast a health book on them at second level. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, they're gonna make a dexterity saving throw. That is the best facet of their game. Um, oh, they barely succeed. Um, these uh, these nimble thief halflings. Uh, they're going to uh, take half of that damage, which is going to be a total of four points of damage, uh, as they kind of quickly duck out of the way as the fire courses out from the wound where you were struck. Uh, but you've taken your attack and you are able to keep moving forward if you wish. Uh, yeah, I'll move forward. Alright, oh, you I step into the room the and the mayor's kind of, you see the mayor has just stabbed your ally with a rapier before they were waiting and uh, with their opportunity attack. You still have an action as you move into the room. What do you want to do? Do I still have a bonus action though? Is the reaction my bonus action? Nope, that's yeah. just your reaction. You still have a bonus action too. Right, uh, bonus action, I'm going to place he uh, Hexblade's Curse on the mail. Um, okay, you do this. And then I'm going to have him with my pack weapon. Um, alright, that is, uh... I'll try to end it. Unfortunately going to, uh, that is unfortunately going to miss. Uh, but... Hmm, pardon me, I'm getting a little bit tired. Um, you, uh, yeah, you fire it and it glides us harmlessly off the mare. Uh, as we move to the next initiative, which is these, um, uh, which are these two halflings uh, who are going to, actually there's one thug left, uh, and they are going to wheel around, and, and they're going to take a stab at you, um, they're going to take a stab at you, Bog. Because uh, you just took down the front of, I assume a six misses you, Bog. Uh, yep. Uh, another one's going to stab at you with a short sword, one of these halflings. Um, that's an 18. Does that get you? Yeah, I know you have this extra AC right Oh, now. that does! Uh, and the other one is gonna go after you as, uh, with this short sword. Uh, cause most of your party has moved away, so you don't have as much cover as you did before. Does a 13 get you as? Uh, I'll do shield. Okay, you throw up a force field in front of it, and the sword, sh short sword glow glances harmlessly to the side. Um, but, uh, Bog, you take 9 points of piercing damage, unfortunately. Uh, and that is all for foe turn. Um, actually, now it, now it is the mayor's turn. Uh, and the mayor is going to get them while they're weak and go after you again, Minoru. Uh, but that's a seven is going to miss. Um, so that's the next initiative, which is you, Bog. What do you want to do, Bog? There's one thug. Right, I'm, gonna, thieves, I'm just going to beat up really that dumb. dude who just uh, stabbed me. I got these cool new uh, clawed boxing gloves. I, uh... I don't know how, they just kind of appeared one day, and uh, I'm pretty good with them. Go ahead and punch. And I'm going to make an unarmed two. Um, okay. 14, unfortunately, just misses, but the 19, um, the 19 will hit. Uh, and for five points of bludgeoning damage, this one's already taken quite a few hits, and with this last strike, this halfling kind of goes down. Uh, you want to describe your finishing blow on this halfling? Uh, I'm gonna pile drive him like the magic he is! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you kind of jump up and, um, I'd rather you not use the word midget in the future, just keep in mind. Oh yeah, that's my, so, oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay, just keep it in mind forward. Uh, and you jump and kind of elbow down onto this halfling and they get thrown down to the ground. Um, and, um, that is, uh, that is all for your turn. You've taken down one more foe. Only two remain in the mare. Uh, as we move next to you, as what do you want to do? Uh, ha uh, remind me again just who's around me and the closest. Um, would you like to get your, yeah. would you like to get back your Tides of Chaos, by the way? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, all right, a wild search happens. Uh, let me... Uh, roll me a d100 if you don't mind. Okay, 39, and that's uh, 
Yeah, hey, nice. Right. Uh, you regain. I don't think you had right. lost any hit points, but you regained two d ten hit points. But I at least got my tides of chaos back. But you got your tides of chaos back. Uh, so a healing energy washes over, uh, just seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, and then, uh, what do you want to do with your turn? Uh, I'll use I'll use my tides of chaos then, and <laughs> I'll uh, ray of frost the near the nearest uh, person. Um, okay, uh, go ahead and make an attack roll with advantage. Um, that's gonna hit. Roll damage. Um, Excellent. <laughs> you're going. Are you going after? I'm sorry. There's two foes left. There's a halfling and a, and a guard, and they're both kind of equidistant. If you want to go after one of the guards or one of the halflings, I'll go uh, for the halfling. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's gonna hit for eight points of cold damage. You see the frost kind of course out, uh, and they begin to uh, they begin to shiver a bit. Their speed has been reduced. Uh, as we move around to the top of the initiative, which is going to be you, Minoru. I'm sorry, did you even have any other actions? Did you bonus action or anything? Uh, no, I think... Oh, yeah, a bonus action, I'll convert my sorcery points into a spell spot. Very good. Um, Minoru. I was going to go easy on you, thinking that you were just some feeble pushover politician, but now I see you're also studied in martial practices. <laughs> Uh, barely! Do still go easy on me! I'm going to booming blade. <laughs> okay. The mayor. Check that. And... Oh. Oh. Uh, roll damage. Uh, eight. Um. Is that all that you. Because isn't that an, a, a weapon attack? That. Oh, okay, it just... Never mind, that's right. Yeah, I just got confused. Uh, you... Slam in with your, uh, Kodachi, and you kind of hit the mare. Uh, and... Let me see. Oh, wait, that's not the right thing. And... <laughs> uh, would you care to describe your killing blow on the mare? <laughs> Hopefully just concussing blow and not outright killing non us all. Non-lethal strike? Yeah. Okay, because if you hadn't, you would have actually killed him outright. I rolled for his health, and he had three hit points. <laughs> so, uh, you just bring him. He goes, he goes, hopefully you'll take it easy on me. I'm not too strong. And then you whack him once in the head, and just, ah, falls over unconscious. In the, in the process of drawing the blade, I just slam the grip into his face. <laughs> it's over. Uh, and, yeah, he <laughs> collapses. Um, and you can see also in this room, now that you're taking in stock, there's a big pile of welcomes taking items that seem to be stacked in here. Uh, the room has no windows, it looks to be just like a private study of his. Um, and with that we move to Okta. Um, the mayor is down, uh, and there's two people that are still here kind of battling it out. Um, although they don't seem to be aware yet that their leader's down. What do you want to do? I'm just going to shoot the nearest enemy to me. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. That's one of the guards. Uh, roll damage on that. Eleven. I mean, yep. Uh, That's adding. Oh, the, oh, you weren't supposed to. They're supposed to be on the GM later, but you now know that that was the the amount of hit points that you needed to kill this uh, guard. As he hadn't been attacked yet, but that's still enough to bring him down. So you uh, fire your uh, icy light crossbow that you got from that weird wizard, uh, and it sticks in, and they fall. Um, there's only one enemy left. Uh, at this point, this halfling's kind of like looking around a little bit sheepishly. Uh, as we move <laughs> next to you, um, actually it's faux turn. Uh, they are going to take the disengage action and begin running out the door. Um, and that's their turn. Uh, Buzz. Uh, my turn? Yep. Alright, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna take out that horseshoe I got earlier, and I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it at him. I'm gonna give you, make me an attack roll. This person has a lot of health left, but for the callback, and I'm gonna give you advantage, if you roll a natural 20 on this one, I will let you knock them unconscious with this horseshoe, even though it doesn't do that much oh, damage. Wait. So roll me a natural 20, and you get to make the roll with advantage. Uh, how much damage would you say it would do? Uh, an improvised thrown weapon, I believe, does 1d4 plus your strength. 
uh, something along. The, I believe that is the uh, the answer. But like I said, if you get a natural twenty, you will knock them unconscious with this horseshoe automatically. I'm giving you a. I'm giving you a free one hit. In the All right, here I go. <laughs> Ah, you oh. toss the horseshoe out the window towards this individual, uh, and it clatters to the ground harmlessly. It does not hit. Um, and um, anything else on your turn, Bog? Are you just gonna kind of just be like, ah, well? Oh, no, I'm not give up. That's yeah, all. There you go. Um, as uh, how far away is the halfling now? Um, they're out the door. Um, they're moving at a pretty good pace, but they had to disengage last time. They were about 60 feet out because they um, used an ability to disengage as bonus action. Uh, so, th yeah, they're 60 <laughs> feet out, so you could just walk up and you could cast any ranged ability at them if you just walked to your 30 feet. Uh, but they're going to yeah, start I'll... really getting away next turn. I'll, I'll throw a Chaos Bolt. All right. Make an attack roll. Hey, would you? I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna ask if you wanted your tides of chaos back, but you would hit with either one anyway. So, uh, yeah. roll, roll that damage. <laughs> if you roll high enough, you could get them. It is possible. Ah, unfortunately not. Uh, as you <clears throat> uh, ready up your damage, what type of damage does it do? I'll I'll make it psychic. Uh, they take. Um, you just throw this chaos bolt towards them, and you see they start to like freak out a little bit, and their head quivers. Uh, but they continue to book it, uh, and one of these halflings does get away. Uh, but you have defeated Mare Gumdrops uh, and stopped the corruption that was secretly plaguing uh, the, the, uh, the town here in. Uh, in addition to already getting your 100 Bartholomew bucks, which he paid you earlier, you also each gain one point of experience. Uh, and uh, what happens as you conclude the adventure here? What do you, uh, what do you all kind of do? Do you, do you redistribute the, uh, the items to the town? Actus is gonna yeah. walk away with a hand on her face, sighing <laughs> as to why we killed, almost killed the town mayor. <laughs> he knocked him out. Uh, he's a uh, he, he was a corrupt mayor. It's, a, it's okay ish. Um, as you kind of explain what happened to the townsfolk, uh, some of them are a little bit disheveled. Uh, some of them seem not surprised, and that the mayor has been up to some shady things in the past. Um, but uh. Yeah, uh, that is the kind of situation that you find yourselves in. Uh, and with that, you have completed both this adventure and, like, the after-party half of this adventure. Because it went a very strange way I did not expect at the beginning there. Um, so, uh, congratulations, you guys. The welcomes taking has been saved here. I'm probably not strong enough to do this, but the last thing I want to do is pick up the unconscious mayor and leave him laying on a table somewhere in the middle of town. <laughs> oh, that's that's so good. All right, and that's the oh, uh, the end title card is like the mayor tied up, uh, just laying upon the welcomes taking table uh, outside of town hall. Uh, we'll be right back, everyone. That concludes our second ridiculous adventure. We got one more uh, left tonight, and we'll be back soon with our third game. So make sure you stay tuned. Much love, all. Be right back. <laughs>